Hi everyone. Well, as you probably know, there's been a lot of debate for quite a long time about whether organic food really is any better than conventional food. It would seem to me intuitively that organic would be better, but um, recently there was a huge meta-analysis done, a study reviewing all these studies that had previously been done on organic versus conventional, and amazingly they concluded that there was no difference in nutritional value of organic versus conventional foods. Just looking at this uh, off the bat, I found this very strange because I'd previously seen other studies that showed that um, organic produce had much higher mineral content, such as this study from Rutgers University from 1995. Uh, what the meta-analysis did show was uh, there were some slight nutritional differences with a, a couple of minerals, like there was more phosphorus in the organic food. 30% less pesticide residue in the organic versus the conventional food and uh, also there was about 33 percent lower presence of antibiotic resistant bacteria in organically raised uh, meat. Overall though they, they said that there wasn't really a big difference in the kinds of foods that were being looked at in these studies that were in the meta-analysis. Um, I, I did kind of wonder then um, how how is this possible and one thing I considered was that maybe it has to do with our definition of organic. Maybe what they're calling organic for some foods um, really shouldn't qualify as organic. And I uh, found out from this article that uh, of, of the studies that were looked at in the meta-analysis, each was designed in a different way and focused on different kinds of measurements or health outcomes which were complicated by differing definitions of organic or incongruous agricultural practices. So maybe it really did have to do with how they were defining organic. And in this other article from sciencebasedmedicine.org, uh, they mentioned that organic farming does use pesticides, but only natural pesticides are allowed. There is little to no evidence that these organic pesticides are less harmful for consumers or the environment. It's just assumed that they are based upon their naturalistic fallacy. I tend to think this article is probably a little biased. But anyhow, maybe it's true that some of the pesticides that are used Maybe they're really not that much safer, and you know, maybe um, maybe there is a problem. Mike Adams says a flawed organic food study really just a media slap to confuse the public about organics while pushing GMOs. I think that he's right that on the whole, a study like this just kind of gives the a lot of people who are probably not very well informed the impression that it really doesn't matter what you eat. Uh, just go ahead and keep eating whatever you get at the supermarket and don't bother to buy organic. Uh, of course, they, they were not looking at processed versus whole foods, GMOs versus natural foods, consumption of corn syrup or all these other things and they weren't really looking at health outcomes that much at all. So I've been wondering, you know, how did this happen? Uh, like, it looks to me like they weren't really trying to find the truth. And I found this article on the Huffington Post which pointed out that since this study came out, consumer advocacy groups, fellow researchers and environmental and parenting organizations condemned the study and have suggested financial ties to food giant Cargill motivated it and they've even filed a petition to have the research retracted from its journal. Financial ties to food giant Cargill? Well, that's very possible because of who runs these medical and scientific journals. Unfortunately, the pharmaceutical and biotech industries have um, a lot of control over what goes in there, what gets funding, what gets prominent publication, and what gets media attention. So it could really be that this was like a big, you know, a propaganda attack, a big psyop, like Mike Adams says. And another thing uh, that I found in the process of researching this, which was not mentioned. Uh, in the study, which wasn't brought up, uh, was was the, the risk of the antibiotics that are fed to animals, the, the risk that they might pose to human health. Farmers may be causing obesity epidemic by feeding livestock antibiotics. I thought this was really interesting. What I found out was that, um, maybe you already knew this, but I didn't, the, the farmers feed the animals antibiotics not to keep them free of disease, but to fatten them up. Isn't that amazing? The antibiotics actually cause the animals to gain weight. 
And by the way, this is banned in the European Union, but they use it in America. And I thought, well, isn't that interesting? Because Americans have a big problem with obesity. You have over 60% of people overweight, 30% of people obese. They also consume 80% of the world's pharmaceuticals, as I've mentioned before. And they consume a lot of meat that's laced with traces amounts of antibiotics. These antibiotics fatten up the animals. Maybe they also fatten up the humans. So I looked into this more and sure enough, there was a study that showed that antibiotics are linked to weight gain. So they did this study and they had this article and there's a picture of this cute little fat mouse. It looks so squishy and soft. <laughs> it's cute, but it's probably not very healthy. So um, what they mentioned here was that the antibiotics, which by the way, Americans also consume a lot of these just from their doctor's prescriptions, um, they alter the bacteria in the gut and that these bacteria in the treated mice activated more genes that turn carbohydrates into short chain fatty acids and they turned on genes related to lipid conversion in the liver. So they alter the way that you metabolize carbohydrates. And then they went on to look at how this might affect humans and there were studies done on this and they found that antibiotic exposure early in life was linked to being overweight later especially if you were exposed to antibiotics before you were six months old. So organic food, not any better than conventional. I don't believe it. And I, I think it is just a way, you know, publishing this is just a way to confuse the public. And I think that the way that we raise our, our food, our, you know, our livestock and, and grow our produce, that it, it does undermine our health in many ways and that we need to be aware of these things. and. And uh, this antibiotics, this is news to me. And if you have small children, especially, you might want to be really careful about what kind of um, milk or meat you give them because they, they might end up being predisposed to being overweight for the rest of their lives. So uh, let me know what you think of this study. And um, do you eat organic? Do you try to eat organic? And do you avoid these kind of things? Or do you feel that probably these are all within allowable levels and it's it's probably not that dangerous for you. But let me know what you think and thanks for listening to me and I'll see you next time. The truth occurs. The truth occurs.